Hey guys, Tina here and welcome to my next wrap up today. I'll be wrapping up books 7 through 9. The first of those is The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert, uh, which is a book that I'm pretty sure that you have all heard about because people have been talking about it, I'm pretty sure that since Book Expo. Uh, and already, you know, in the US and some other places probably, it's already out. But I did receive uh, an ARC copy of it from the UK publisher and the UK version of it which is the same, I'm assuming, except for the cover, uh, comes out on the 8th of February, so today. So this is the story of Alice, who has had a pretty weird upbringing. She and her mother have been constantly moving around the country, never staying too long in one place, because bad luck always catches up to them. Alice also has a re really famous grandmother that she has never met, but her grandmother owns this estate called the Hazelwood, and she's also the author of a bunch of fairy tales that got really popular, but Alice herself has never read the book, because it's unobtainable, you cannot get it anywhere. And then at the beginning of this book, uh, Alice and her mother learned that her grandmother has passed away. And for a while there, Alice's life sort of, sort of normalizes. So they settle down in New York, her mother gets married, and Alice goes to school for a longer period of time in the same place. And um, then her mother disappears, and Alice, of course, wants to find her, and that's where the adventure takes off. Now this is a pretty hybrid book and I did expect to actually love it. As it turns out, I'm sort of in the middle. I don't not like it, but I do not love it either. So I, I did think that it was basically just okay. Um, it started off really well. I, you know, I love the premise of this book, all this mystery and fairy tales and how everything comes together. What does it all mean and all that. I was really intrigued by this book. And actually at the beginning was really, you know, I was really pleased with how it all started. It sort of started as a mystery book and I love that because I'm in a really mystery kick right now. Um, I also liked the quirkiness of the characters and the magical aspects of this book and in some ways it actually reminded me of The Raven Boys by Maggie Stivato, which is a series that I love so I was really pumped for this book. And then sort of things started going downhill. But before we get to that part, I also have to mention that the foreshadowing in this book is really great. I really appreciated it. And as I was reading it, I wasn't even noticing it. But when I got to the second half of the book, sort of, I started making connections with what was told in the first part. And a lot of the things that were sort of annoying or made no sense at the beginning suddenly were making sense. And uh, suddenly people behaving in a certain way was a lot more logical than before, uh, so I really love that. But then I started noticing that the writing was starting to get to me. Uh, it was trying to be really beautiful with all the metaphors and description, but for me it was pretty confusing, you know, there were times when I had to go back just to make sense of things and it started to get really annoying and just unenjoyable. Also, Alice is really bitchy. She's not a likable character at all. She's very arrogant. She has all these anger issues. She thinks that she's better than everyone else. She's pretty judgy and not compassionate at all. And uh, you do find out what that, why that is, uh, it's, you know, towards the end of the book. But uh, that explanation, yes, I did appreciate it and it makes a lot of sense, but still, you know, you have to read this book with a really unlikable character and that explanation, you know, doesn't wash it away, basically. So, yeah, I didn't, you know, it didn't make me like the book any better. Also, the first part of this book feels like a YA mystery, which I was really into. I really liked it. And then you get to the second half and suddenly this turns into a fantasy and not even a fantasy that I would love to read because you all know that I love fantasy, but this was just, it was just not to my taste, to my liking. Uh, to me, it actually felt as some magical realism and I'm pretty sure that people would not classify it as such. So, you know, don't, don't take my word for that. It just felt to me like that. And the thing is that from what I've read of magical realism, I don't really care for it. And I sort of had the same feeling about the second half of this book. There were definitely parts that were really interesting. Um, but there were just, you know, there weren't enough of those to make me like it. However, to end my thoughts on the Hazelwood on a high note, I have to say that I really did appreciate the symbolism that I personally found in this book. I'm pretty sure that people, other people, find different stuff. Uh, but I really like the fact that it shows you that you cannot escape from yourself. 
Uh, whatever problems, whatever issues you're having, if you do not deal with them, you will be carrying them wherever you go. You can move to wherever you want, you can move to paradise, but still, if you don't deal with those issues, they will go with you, they will follow you. And um, I really like how Alice is, you know, Alice is basically the symbol for this. Uh, of course, again, there are those reasons that we find out about why she's the way she is. Um, but I just found this really intriguing and I really liked it. And also, it tells you that you can fight your fate. You're not, you know, that set in whatever grand plan there is for you, if there's such a thing. You can fight it, you can change it, you can change yourself. And with doing that, you can break the chains or, you know, fate whatever it is and i really found that inspiring the next book that i read is autobiography by christina lauren now i have been hearing about christina lauren and this book for a while now but i never wanted to reach for any of her books but then i saw joss from scribble reads talk about this book she said that it was a really great romance book and i decided you know what i'm gonna pick it up why not and i also read somewhere that it's similar to simon vs. the homo sapiens agenda which is one of my favorite books ever it was that one's really fun and of course i picked this one up and it tells the story of tanner whose family is pretty um liberal and they moved from California to this town called Provo which is uh, basically everybody there is Mormon and um, since uh, Tanner is bisexual uh, that is something that he's definitely not happy about simply because he was out in California and now he has to hide that part of his identity uh, just in order to not make people uncomfortable to not have problems with others um, who might be more judgy and uh, of course he falls for a Mormon boy uh, who is definitely not out and uh, things of course are complicated and I have to say that yes Tanner did remind me in some ways uh, of Simon um, the book itself was not for me as enjoyable as Simon versus, versus the Homo Sapiens agenda um, of course it deals with important issues I cannot say whether or not uh, the Mormon faith was represented adequately or not um, I'm not sure whether one of the authors is Mormon or not, or sort of knows the religion, I'm not sure. Um, however, I did find it very interesting. I've never read a book about Mormons before. You know, the only idea I have about Mormons is seeing them on the streets, and they're always very nice, very nicely dressed and all that. Um, really, I don't have any issues with them, but I just never really... Um, thought about them actually uh, and it's it was an interesting book of course uh, it does have its sad parts um, because of the whole acceptance and all that um, uh, I would recommend it definitely if you're interested in these aspects um, it's a cute but serious uh, romance book about these two boys and then the last book that I read was another romance and it's called Burn by A.J. Welch uh, it's about these two guys again who are actually well, straight, but apparently not entirely straight. Um, it's about this boy, well, man called Raiden, who used to be in this boy band, but then they got this band, and um, he's basically now a songwriter, uh, and he gets hacked, and basically all of his personal life is out there for the world to see, um, because apparently this hacker has a grudge, a grudge against him, uh, and because of all the threats that he's receiving, he gets a bodyguard. And this bodyguard, uh, he's a former Marine, and I cannot remember his name right now. So we'll just go with the, the bodyguard. <laughs> and um, of course, uh, then Raiden has to go on tour with this band because they're writing songs together, and this bodyguard goes with him. And at the beginning of this book, Raiden doesn't really take these threats seriously because, you know, he, he thinks that it's just going to blow over and everything's going to be fine. But as they go on the store, he realizes that uh, that is not likely to happen. And the threat is a bit more serious than he thought. And uh, of course, there's a bit of action, there's a bit of romance and all that. And it was a fun, easy, light to read. Um, these days, um, you know, it's, it was not a mind-blowing romance or anything, but I've read so many romans that I easily get bored by them because they do follow the same trends. And this one was just different enough for me to actually managed to read it in its entirety and not just a DNF it after like 30 pages or something like that. So yeah. Basically, that's the end of this wrap-up. Let me know down in the comments if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them. Do you agree with me or not? Either way, it's fine. Uh, and thank you for watching this video and see you in my next one. Bye!